Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It is an honor for me to be joined here today by Commissioner Batts and two of our very strong partners who are, who are working with us every day to reduce crime and to reduce violence uh, here in Baltimore. I want to thank State's Attorney uh, Greg Bernstein and U.S. Attorney Rod Rosenstein for being here for this uh, very important announcement and for their partnership. Uh, they remain committed to targeting and prosecuting violent offenders, and we know that that's what will make the difference. We'll focus on illegal guns and continue to focus our attention on uh, reducing gang, gang violence in our city. I strongly believe that one of the reasons that Baltimore's made progress over the last decade in reducing violence is because of our strong relationships with all of our criminal justice partners. Since taking office in 2010, I've made it clear that we will and I will do everything to support their efforts because reducing violence remains one of my top priorities in city government. By reducing violence, uh, you know, it, it, it's a linchpin for everything that we do and it has to remain the, t the top on all of our agenda. And that's why today uh, we are here to announce an enhanced partnership uh, as Baltimore City crime fighters, all working together to get violent offenders and guns off of our street. No one in any of our neighborhoods should have to live in fear of gun violence. No matter what zip code you're living in, no matter what neighborhood you're living in, no one should have to live in fear. Uh, it is my goal as mayor to make sure that wherever you live in Baltimore, you can live in peace without the fear of gun violence outside of your door. And none of us standing here will be satisfied until Baltimore is one of the safest cities in our country and residents feel safe in their homes and in their neighborhoods. Today, in order to enhance our effort, I'm announcing new city funding to hire two, two additional assistant state attorneys. These attorneys will be detailed to the U.S. Attorney's Office as special assistant U.S. attorneys for the investigation and federal prosecution of violent criminals in designated neighborhoods in East and in West Baltimore. By focusing our resources on specific selected areas and individuals, we expect a more direct impact on those neighborhoods that have seen the greatest incidents of violence and criminal activity. In addition, Federal prosecution provides greater opportunity to obtain significant sentences that will keep these individuals off our streets for longer periods of time. And finally, defendants will be incarcerated in distant federal prison facilities, separated from their affiliates and unable to continue their criminal action from behind bars. These new prosecutors will target the worst of the worst violent offenders in neighborhoods that have struggled the most with crime. This new effort is focused on those who wish to do harm in our community, those who do not respect life, do not respect community, neighborhoods, want to destroy what we are trying to build in Baltimore. Those, these efforts and those prosecutors will be focused on them. We stand together today to do everything we can to apprehend, prosecute, and convict these offenders. Before I turn it over to uh, our state's attorney, uh, Bernstein, I want to acknowledge Councilwoman Ricky Spector, who's been a, a partner um, for many years in our uh, fight to reduce violence in Baltimore City. I want to thank uh, Greg Bernstein uh, and our U.S. attorney uh, for their help, uh, for their help, for their partnership, for their willingness to collaborate. I also want to thank uh, Commissioner Batch for his, his continued work in reducing violence in Baltimore City. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, well, 
I want to thank uh, Mayor Rawlings Blake for making this strategic investment to reduce the violence in our city, detailing additional prosecutors from the state's attorney's office to the United States Attorney's Office continues a long-standing arrangement between the two agencies and is just one of many examples of the close working relationship both Rod Rosenstein and I have to investigate and prosecute violent repeat offenders. Under this cooperative arrangement, prosecutors from the State's Attorney's Office uh, have previously done two to three year rotations in the U.S. Attorney's Office prosecuting felony cases and drug trafficking cases with great results. The mayor's plan enables us to double the size of this initiative from two prosecutors to four. The program provides a number of vitally important benefits using the resources of our federal law enforcement partners, including the FBI, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the Drug Enforcement Agency, and other agencies cross-designated assistant state's attorneys investigate, prosecute, and incarcerate violent criminals in federal court, producing positive results for our city. It also, as the mayor alluded to, enables us to make use of the federal sentencing scheme, which in certain cases provides for increased penalties of incarceration for violent repeat offenders with prior criminal records. We are not only doubling this crime-fighting initiative, thanks to the mayor's vision and commitment, but we are doing it in a targeted, strategic way by assigning these two prosecutors to specific areas in the eastern and western districts where we are seeing the most violence. And in that regard, we're getting, as always, tremendous cooperation from Commissioner Batts and his folks, who are kind of the boots on the ground, so to speak, on a daily basis, developing the intelligence which uh, my prosecutors and Rod Rosenstein's prosecutors who can then use to develop these cases. Uh, Commissioner Batts's folks are doing great work in developing that intelligence. Now, this strategic focus is consistent with the community prosecution model that we have created in the state's attorney's office in which prosecutors are assigned to specific areas and neighborhoods, thereby forging better relationships with the people who live there and the police who work in the districts that encompass these areas. The net effect is more strategic prosecutions and better intelligence that we use to investigate and prosecute violent repeat offenders. And I am very confident that by assigning these two assistant state's attorneys to the U.S. Attorney's Office, that Rod's group will be able to continue that pattern. Now, the cross-designation of the two assistant state's attorneys to the U.S. Attorney's Office is part of a larger strategy to combat not only the recent violence in our city, but crime overall. In recent weeks, representatives from the U.S. Attorney's Office, from my office, and from Commissioner Batts's office, including the commissioner himself, have been conducting a series of high-level meetings to develop investigative strategies, strategies excuse me, that will target specific individuals and groups who we believe are responsible for much of the violence we have been seeing in the city. We are hopeful that these investigations will lead to successful prosecutions and incarceration of these VROs. And I would again reiterate that it is because of this collaborative relationship with not only the U.S. Attorney's Office, but uh, equally importantly, if not more importantly, the work that my office does with Commissioner Batts and his detectives and officers that we are very hopeful that we're going to be successful. In closing, I again commend the mayor's commitment to taking all necessary steps to reduce the violence in our city and create safer neighborhoods for our citizens. And I know I speak for the police commissioner and Mr. Rosenstein in saying that she has our full support in these efforts. Thank you. Hey, good morning. I'm Rod Rosenstein, United States Attorney. The announcement today is about two more prosecutors who will be working in our federal court. But the message is broader. The message is about the coordinated federal, state, and local strategy uh, that we're bringing to bear on violent crime here in Baltimore City. It was only 18 months ago that uh, we achieved a result that many people thought was impossible, and that was lowering the annual murder rate in Baltimore below 200. Uh, we intend to do that again. Uh, we face a lot of challenges. There are a lot of armed criminals uh, on the streets, uh, and we do have a strategy to combat that. As State's Attorney mentioned, as Police Commissioner Batts will comment on in a moment, uh, we are working together. We have a sense of urgency. You know, law enforcement is always working with a sense of urgency. 
uh, but we're working this summer with a renewed sense of urgency to try to hit off some of this violence. We don't want to be in the business of prosecuting murderers. We want to be in the business of preventing murders uh, by arresting armed criminals and intervening with violent gangs before uh, they commit additional criminal activity. And that's what we're working on. We're working on it uh, in a joint way. We're bringing to bear all the law enforcement resources we have. Uh, and I believe that with the support uh, of the people of Baltimore, uh, with their cooperation in helping us to identify these violent criminals, we can make an impact. And I want to call on the citizens of Baltimore who want to see safe streets to work with the police department. We're committed to doing everything we can to keep communities safe, but we need your cooperation. We need people to work with law enforcement, to call in tips, to cooperate when they witness criminal activity. Uh, if we have your cooperation, we're going to commit the resources to make sure that you're safe, to make sure that your children are safe, uh, and to ensure that the streets of Baltimore are secure. We aim not just to bring the murder rate below 200, but to keep it falling. Uh, because everybody in Baltimore, as the mayor said, like everybody throughout Maryland, deserves to live in a safe community. Our next speaker is uh, Commissioner Batts, uh, who uh, I've been honored to work with. Uh, as Mr. Bernstein mentioned, we've met, we continue to meet on a regular basis along with the leaders of our federal agencies, uh, continuing to uh, address our strategy to make any changes that are necessary and to target uh, what we refer to as the hot spots, the most violent areas in the city, uh, to make sure that we can prevent violence in the future. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be here. I'd like to, with a sense of excitement, say uh, thank you to the mayor. I remember talking to her probably about uh, the month of February uh, from her past history of being a prosecutor. <clears throat> she said this <laughs> public defender. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> As a public defender, she said, I have this idea. And she shared this idea uh, with me earlier this year, and it has come to fruition. And I'm very excited that it's coming um, uh, online very quickly. <clears throat> We're moving very quickly in the organization to hone our, our strategies, not only within the police department, but with our federal partners and our, our state, state partners, too, at the same time. We have focused on the eastern and the, and the western. We have seen results in our recent, a recent uh, spat of violence that had, has taken place about two to three weekends ago. Uh, we have responded. We are making a number of arrests and have made a number of arrests, but we're moving, moving forward to um, be more assertive and more progressive. And it starts here. It starts with the prosecutors uh, on the ground here with our police officers on a day-to-day -day basis because this fight against guns begins with the boots on the ground and it ends in the boots in the courtroom. And so our partnership our strategic partnership is working well and moving in the right directions, and you will see the results of that as we move forward from this day in this point. So I'd like to say thank you to the mayor, thank you to Greg, and thank you to Rod as our partnership comes together and we, pro we provide a safer Baltimore. Thank you very much. Thank you. The mayor has time for a few questions. Okay. So before I do take the questions, I do want to uh, acknowledge and thank uh, Councilman Curran uh, for being here and again to thank uh, our police commissioner, the, our uh, state's attorney Greg Bernstein and uh, U.S. Attorney Rod Rosenstein for their continued uh, support. I, I really, you know, this is about an announcement of new prosecutors, but as uh, U.S. Attorney Rosenstein said, it's about a new way of uh, enhanced partnership, strategic partnership, so we can take violent offenders off the street. Mr. Rosenstein addressed this briefly. I wonder if you could. How can something like this work if people are afraid to report what they know to police investigators, to prosecutors, if they are afraid to cooperate? We have to overcome that with good investigations as well as our renewed commitment, uh, working with uh, Commissioner Batts, to strengthen our relationships with the community. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I talked about with the commissioner when he came on board uh, in the interview process is we cannot do this alone. We need to uh, create better partnerships and build trust in uh, our neighborhoods, and that's one of the things that he's worked on. He has uh, high-level command staff, a dedicated unit to uh, developing and building uh, relationships of trust with the community that will supplement the work that we're doing by targeting these violent offenders. So this only works uh, if we have seasoned uh, prosecutors that um, that know the ropes and can get the job done. Uh, so it, it is a, uh, a sacrifice that 
it does not, um, it's not overlooked by me that the state's attorney is making two, uh, de two detailed seasoned attorneys uh, to this. Now they will be uh, backfilled uh, with uh, you know, other attorneys in his office, so we're, we're not gonna leave him short, but he is giving, I mean, this only worked uh, all around if, if these are people who have the experience to um, get the convictions. Do you know who those are going to be? Well, the, the office has a vetting process. Uh, we give uh, Rod a number of candidates and they then interview them and they're currently going through background checks and as soon as that's completed, we'll be ready to go. But I would echo what the mayor said, that they are uh, the people that Rod's folks are talking to are very experienced prosecutors in our office that we think are going to be able to hit the ground running. Do you have any information on yesterday's victims? Uh, you know, there's some, were there witnesses in that shooting? Um, do you have any update on, on the two victims who were shot yesterday? Well, what's happening at Laura Western, it, and it kind of comes back to the question that, that was raised and, and the connectivity, are we have residents who are cooperating. And um, we've, we've put out there in the news that we have this thing of no snitching and then what's going on. I've been out there uh, probably every day talking to the neighborhoods, and especially where we have traumatic issues that take place of violence. I'm out there, I'm talking to the residents. They're telling us a lot. We're making an arrest. We're bringing people to justice. They are talking. So they just don't want to be put out front, uh, but I, I, they are giving me tons of information. Uh, the gentleman who was shot, the brother and sister were yesterday, the gentleman who was shot was uh, also shot uh, at that same location or around the corner a year ago. Uh, we have a pretty good detailed story of what we think took place out there, and so we're moving on that. And so I won't put all of that out part of the investigation. I understand, but was he a witness? Was this witness? Is this a case of witness retaliation, do you think? Um, I don't, I'm not in a position to say that. Uh, he did have a trial that came up about a month ago as a relationship to that shooting uh, uh, a year ago. We don't know that, and I don't want to put that out there. We don't want to put that at speculation. That, that goes against exactly what we're doing here. It scares other people. Well, he got shot, and we don't know if that's it, actually the fact that took place. So I think citizens are cooperating. They are telling us information. We are moving on it. Are the people who are going to be arrested or prosecuted by these, your prosecutors, Mr. Spurgeon, are they going to be prosecuted in the federal system or in the city system? Because I know that there's uh, the complaints I often hear is there's a shortage of courtrooms, trials get delayed, and everything like that. No, the, the whole point of this is to use the resources of the federal system and I say this time and time again, and I'm going to say it once again. You know, Mr. Rosenstein is the U.S. Attorney for the District of Maryland, and in that capacity, he is responsible for prosecuting federal offenses that occur throughout the state, not only violent crime, but white collar crime, narcotics cases, the whole range of offenses. But he has been, since he became the U.S. Attorney, committed to utilizing as much of his resources in his office and correspondingly the law enforcement side to prosecute these repeat violent offenders. So the objective is for these assistant state's attorneys who are cross-designated to the U.S. Attorney's Office to prosecute these violent repeat offenders for criminal violations that occur in the city in federal court. As the mayor alluded to, the, the net effect of this is we can take advantage of enhanced sentencing proceedings. We can possibly get cases to trial more quickly and in that regard have a real impact on the city. Thank you. Uh, one more question, please. And I do want to thank Councilwoman Helen Holton for being here as well. Thank you. Last question. Does this indicate um, that state law isn't tough enough or that you're giving up on the state portion? No, absolutely not. It indicates that you have to use the tools at your discretion to deal with our most violent offenders. You know, the, the, the state system uh, is what it is. And in order to get to our most violent offenders, those who are at you know, the worst of the worst, you need the best of the best, the strongest uh, laws that we have, and that's our federal, federal system. We know when people uh, have the threat of federal time, it's a deterrent. Um, you see it nationwide. So we want to use the strongest deterrents that we can uh, to enable, to allow us to create safer neighborhoods. And, and let me also comment on that. This is not hardly at all a, a, a question of giving up, as you put it, you know, on the state system. Because what this is indicative of is the collaboration that's been existing between the state's attorney's office and the U.S. attorney's office, as well as with Commissioner Batts, you know, since he came and even before the uh, Commissioner Batts became the commissioner. Uh, the, the Maryland laws are certainly tough enough, but um, there are any number of cases that can be brought, and the city court system has a lot of cases that it deals with, and uh, so we have resources that you know, we have to apply in that regard. So to the extent, as I alluded to before, that 
Mr. Rosenstein is committing his resources and the resources of ATF, FBI, DEA, it allows us to just continue that collaborative relationship, enhance these prosecutions, and get the kind of sentences that we need. Thank you very much. Thank you.